They can't bring cameras into the courtroom. You can't? Yeah. Where? Recording, right? No. You see the REC button in the top right hand corner? That's means it's recording. Okay, so I'm recording. Press, we're pressing it to stop. Okay, press it again, it's closed off.
Okay, John, give me a real good one here. Smile. <laughs> a lively smile, eh, John? Okay, go ahead. Go ahead, Hilary. Go ahead. Let's have a full picture. John. John. Len Fleischer. How do you feel, Gabriel? I don't know. Pretty good. I feel good. You ready to go? I feel fine. Last week, get down there. I want to get out of the street. Sorry. It's classic. They ask them. What do you think? They ask Gabriel to defend um, George Bush at the swearing in ceremony. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> And he swore to it, fellas. He I swore to it. it. He took an oath. <laughs> man said he was what on man. They got the they got the certificate so they could see it. Bing. Okay. Okay. Come. That's it. Okay. Lights get more maps on. It's pressed on. Kathy, let's go. Uh, let's uh, go, George. Go, George. Go, go lover. <laughs> This battery. What does it mean by that? Stop. Stop. Yeah. It's a. We. Running. And as part of that preparation, again, I urge you to come involved with the Maryland State Bar Association. It'll help be part of that preparation. Congratulations, and hope to see you in practice. Thank you, Louise. Well, let's hear from Mr. Cornblatt. President of the Bar Association of Baltimore City. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, because she's already told you what the benefits are for being in a Bar Association. One of the main things, I think, is the camaraderie and the friendship. Uh, Chief Judge Murphy mentioned to you uh, Shakespeare, and one of the things Shakespeare said 400 years ago was that lawyers strive mightily 
but then they eat and drink is French. And the place where lawyers nowadays eat and drink is French is in the Bar Association. You will have friendships that will last a lifetime. And believe me, it will make your practice quite a lot easier. And as Louise mentioned, in the State Bar, there are all kinds of activities. And in the City Bar, the same is true too. The whole gamut of activities. And we know the problems that you have getting a job nowadays. We had a seminar last month in which we dealt with the problem of lawyer unemployment. We had law firm uh, hiring partners come in to tell us what it is they look for in a resume. Supporters cheered the outcome. I really couldn't be happier. Not at all. I mean, this is how uh, the judge was vindicated. While women's groups warned lawmakers of the next storm. It is a clear vote against the rights of women, and women will not forget this in 1992. So the on. They all but drowned out the members of the National Organization for Women assembled on the Capitol steps. Senators started leaving almost immediately after a long weekend of often combative, sometimes bizarre hearings. Judiciary Committee member Pat Leahy was understandably drained. He voted Thomas against Thomas. Thomas. And his responsibility is to the whole country, not to one small political ideology, not to one political party, not to one group of people. It's just as Thomas, his responsibility is to everybody. I hope that he knows that. Fellow committee member Strom Thurmond voted to confirm. Do you think that the process has been irreparably harmed? Do you think it should be changed? I don't think it's been irre irreparably harmed. They might, I think it ought to be studied and if we make any improvements, okay. I think Senator Biden handled it well. He can follow with me and, and we uh, follow the usual process. It just happens that this was such a sensitive issue. The votes were closer than a lot of Republicans had anticipated. John Warner. When the vote was counted, the reaction was not necessarily what had been expected. Well, even if it was true, she shouldn't have come forth with it. So I think it's good that he's in. I think it was a fair process. It was a hard process for both Professor Hill and for Judge Thomas, now Justice Thomas. Uh, but uh, ultimately, the political judgment was that um, he should be put, confirmed for the court. Professor Paul participated in that process, testifying for Anita Hill, whom he believes. His only regret? that his testimony did not change more minds in the Senate. I can't imagine what they thought that Professor Hill or I or the other wit corroborating witnesses had to gain by coming forward now and telling the truth. Not everyone felt the search for truth was conducted in a fair or dignified manner. I'm disgusted by the way these liberal special interest groups dragged this man through the mud and did everything they could to destroy his credibility. I'm glad it's over. Floyd Brown's organization produced and aired TV commercials attacking the credibility of Democrats Kennedy and Cranston and committee chairman Biden before the hearings began, but they savored the victory and criticized the political brawl with a clear conscience. The fact is we knew it was going to be a tough battle and we were willing to fight the battle on, on the issues and, and even on some personality questions, but the fact is, is to break the rules of the game is just wrong. In the hearing room we may have witnessed politics at the crudest level, but some say politicians and citizens alike also saw something educational. We saw intelligent, uh, thoughtful, uh, well-educated black Americans on both sides. Uh, it dispelled this myth that black America is a monolith. Woodson says the politicians, black and white, might now begin to approach black America as a diverse community. And after such a bitter fight, when the question is asked, where does a man go to get his good name back? Supporters of Clarence Thomas will answer to the Supreme Court.
Frank Bond, Channel 9 Eyewitness. Nomination of Clarence Thomas of Georgia to be Associate Justice of the United States Supreme Court is hereby confirmed. Yeah! When asked about her son's accuser, Professor Anika Hill, Leola Thomas advised her to pray to God. Mrs. Thomas also credited God with her son's victory today on Capitol Hill. Coming up, Washington Post. ...forward, and that we have to begin to look for ways to solve problems. Clarence Thomas calls for reconciliation after a battle in which both Republicans and Democrats found themselves covered, not with glory, but with mud. Is hereby confirmed. I move to reconsider the... The same people... I'm very pleased to announce that I will nominate Judge Clarence Thomas to serve as Associate Justice of the United States Supreme Court. So it was in the end. On this vote, the yeas are 52 and the nays are 48. The nomination of Clarence Thomas of Georgia to be Associate Justice of the United States Supreme Court is hereby confirmed. A battle that was at every turn and every side drenched in partisan ideological politics. In a narrow sense, Judge Thomas was confirmed today by the closest margin for any Supreme Court nominee in this century because 11 Democratic senators, mostly in the South and West, voted for him. But that does not begin to measure the full political dimensions of this battle, nor the way that strategy and tactics totally dominated the behavior of Thomas's friends and foes. On the day he nominated Clarence Thomas, President Bush made an assertion believed by almost no one. The fact that he is black and a minority has nothing to do with this in the sense that he is the best qualified at this time. From the first salvos from the opposition, the language was often steeped in take no prisoners malice. We have to for Thomas. We don't, we don't wait for questions. We don't wait for sentences. And we kick ass and take names. All through the confirmation hearings, Democrats kept doing what they said they wouldn't do, trying to get Judge Thomas to answer specific questions about abortion. Have you ever had discussion of Roe versus Wade, other than in this room? If you're asking me whether or not I've ever debated the contents of it, the answer to that no is no, Senator. This was a transcendent act of cynicism from the start, from the Bush's uh, naming of Clarence Thomas through the confirmation hearings, through Thomas's performance during the confirmation hearings, through the, uh, the Democratic reaction to that performance, to the vote today. It's, uh, it, 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 it's mind-bogglingly cynical and, uh, and corrupt. We want Thomas! We support Thomas! The political struggle grew even more heated during the Judiciary Committee hearings to investigate Anita Hill's charges. After her confidential statement was leaked with clear political motivation to the press. Judge Thomas offered a frontal, furious challenge to the committee, using a racial frame of reference he had spent a decade criticizing. As a black American, as far as I'm concerned, it is a high-tech lynching for uppity blacks. The committee Republicans, clearly committed to saving this nomination, denounced the last-minute charges in apocalyptic terms. All these interest groups have scratched through everything on earth to try and get something on you, all over the country, all over this town, all over your agency, all over everybody. And they attacked Anita Hill in terms equally tough. I've got statements from her former law professors, statements from people that know her, statements from Tulsa, Oklahoma, saying, watch out for this woman. The Republicans also painted a picture of liberal left interest groups out to savage Judge Thomas with vicious rumors. Those assertions are pure poppycock. Frankly, I believe that the principal problem has been President Bush in the White House and President Reagan. Uh, I believe that they have been very determined to try to pack the court with right-wing conservatives. For their part, committee Democrats chose not when to Matt press Judge Thomas on vulnerable points. His youthful taste for pornography, for example, or his defiant assertion that he had watched none of Anita Hill's testimony. Indeed, that diffidence and Clarence Thomas's charges of racism drew criticism from Democrat Robert Byrd in an impassioned 30-minute speech. I think it was blatant intimidation. And I'm sorry to say, I think it worked. I sat there and I wondered who's going to ask him some tough questions. If you look at the faces of Paul Simon and Howell Heflin and Teddy Kennedy and Dennis DeConcini at 9 o'clock Friday night when 
Clarence Thomas said he wasn't going to answer any questions. I, it it might have might have gone right there. They were, in fact, um, so polite as to uh, make this appear um, kind of mis mismatched. Uh, perhaps it wasn't to have been a trial. Joe Biden said we only want the facts, but basically the Republicans wanted uh, judicial Armageddon. Today's Senate floor debate clearly showed that the bitter feelings over the Thomas battle were not over. Consider this exchange between Senators Ted Kennedy and Arlen Specter. There is no proof that Anita Hill has perjured herself and shame on anyone who suggests that she has. We do not need characterizations like shame in this chamber from the senator from Massachusetts. I reiterate, Mr. President, I reiterate to the senator from Pennsylvania and to others that the way that Professor Hill was treated was shameful. Indeed, at one point it seemed that Senator Orrin Hatch was personally hammering his good friend, Ted Kennedy, on the Chappaquiddick issue. The fact of the matter is, anybody who believes that, uh, I, I know a bridge up in Massachusetts that I'll be happy to sell to them with the help of Senator Kennedy. Hatch later apologized for the slip, Freudian or otherwise. In the end, Judge Thomas became Justice Thomas less because of politics than because of a bedrock American faith in the benefit of the doubt. Most of the Senate Democrats who had lined up for Thomas before the Anita Hill charges stayed with him today. And since it is impossible to get to the bottom of this matter, I think we have to fall back on our legal system and its presumption of innocence for those accused. At day's end, both principals in this drama offered their final thoughts. This is a time for healing in our country that we have to put these things behind us, that we have to go forward. I hope that every one of us is wiser about the process. In form and substance, much of this confirmation debate has been very high-minded, with more posturing than you're likely to find at a chiropractor's convention. In substance, this confirmation process demonstrated what has become a fundamental fact of Washington life, that winning is indeed everything, and that other values, decency, privacy, civility, compromise, are quaint relics from what seems like another time and place. Jeff Greenfield for Nightline in Washington. When we come back, we'll be joined by Michael Dukakis's former campaign manager, Susan. Anita Hill I knew and worked with was a totally different personality from the Anita Hill I heard on Friday. The Anita Hill I knew before was nobody's victim. Alvarez was at her business office in Chicago when Thomas was confirmed this evening. It's going to be a hollow victory. It's going to, to have been something that was paid, a dear price was paid for it. But the mood was jubilant at the office of the Conservative Victory Committee, which had paid for TV ads for Thomas. Tim Lamar. I'm just glad he got on. I'm glad we got a strict constructionist on the court. Sally Hood. It's been a real roller coaster. I think it was very nice to see Clarence Thomas vindicated since it's been such a very public humiliation for him. But in Pinpoint, Georgia tonight, that roller coaster had reached a new high. Robert Hager, NBC News, Washington.